Okay, so let's take a look and see how we did on these. The first one, yeah, 3,456 square inches. We'll put that over one. And our conversion factor, of course, square inches will be on bottom, square feet on top. What's that relationship? Yeah, one square foot is 144 square inches. So the square inches cancel out, and since the 144 is on bottom, we're going to divide it. 34.56 divided by 144 <laughs> is 24 square feet. Over here, 27 square yards. Put it over one. What goes in our con what goes in our conversion factor? Square feet, top or bottom? Okay, square feet, top. What else? Square yards on bottom, so they cancel out. What's the relationship? <clears throat> Nine square feet and one square yard. Perfect. Square yards cancel. So now it's 27 times nine. Oh, what is that? 243 square feet. Twelve square feet. Going into square inches, what's going to be in our conversion factor here? Well, the easy one is always the unit that goes on bottom here. What goes down here? Square feet, the feet squared, what we're getting rid of. So what has to go on top? What unit? Inches squared, good. Now, what's the relationship? One square foot is 144 square inches. So the square feet cancel out, 12 times 144, 1,728 square inches. And then the one that you guys are falling in love with, seven rods squared. <clears throat> of course, rods squared are going to be on bottom, yard squared on top. We know that one rod equals how many yards? 5.5 yards. So if we square that, 5.5 squared is 30.25. So the rod squared cancels out. 7 times 30.25 is 211.75. What do you think? So even here where we had not gone over that conversion, all you have to do is take that linear conversion and you square it. One rod squared is one square rod. 5.5 yards squared is 30.25 square yards. Okay, the last one down here, convert to acres. <clears throat> Now I did it as 40 yards and 90 yards. We did not talk about how many yards are in an acre, did we? How many square yards? We talked about one acre is 43,560 square feet, didn't we? But, shouldn't stop us. We can either change these into feet, so 120 feet, and 270 feet, and multiply them out that way and convert. But that would be the easy way. If you guys did that, that's fine. I'm going to do it the hard way. Forty yards times ninety yards is thirty-six hundred square yards. And I'm going to change my conversion factor. 43,560 square feet is one acre. So 
One square yard is nine square feet. 43,560 divided by nine is 4,840. Does that make sense? So then back over here. Square yards on bottom, 4,840 square yards are in one acre. Square yards cancel out. This is going to be 3,600 divided by 4,840. 0.744 acres. Yeah, you just do this as 120 times 270. Oh, con converted this times nine to make it into square feet. And that, yep, that works too. There's a lot of different ways you get around it. By the way, the technical definition of an acre was not based on square feet at all. Um, it was based on one acre is 160 square rod. Yes. Um, it's off the quarter mile. Um, they wanted a plot of land to be a quarter mile by a quarter mile. And I do not know why they decided that that should be 40 acres. No idea. But I do know that an acre has never been a square. Well, like, you think of an acre, well, an acre is how far by how far? Well, it's never been defined to be as a square. No, an acre's always been oblong. It's always been rectangular. Length and width of, if, of a single acre, the length and width has never been considered to be equal. Yep. You see, I don't know why, but... For some reason, land was always considered to be rectangular rather than square. Yeah, you would think they would want to make it a perfect square, but it... yeah. So, in the metric system, when we do conversions. Remember, this goes off that little chart. Meters are in the middle, decimeters, centimeters, millimeters. Going the other way, decameters, hectometers, kilometers. To convert 2.85 centimeters into millimeters, we've always looked at the chart. To get from centimeters to millimeters, we're moving one spot to the right. What does that mean we have to do to our number? Move the decimal spot, point one spot to the right. 28.5 millimeters. Or if we have, come on. Thirty-seven hundred centimeters going into meters. You get from yeah, from centimeters to meters, there's two spots to the left. We're always going from and to, right? Two spots to the left. So that means decimal point goes two spots to the left. 3,700 centimeters to 37 meters. The reason for that was because each position on the chart is either multiplying by 10 if you're going to the right, or dividing by 10 if you're going to the left. Each spot is multiplying or dividing by 10. What would change
if we did that. Well, our conversions in the standard system, what did we do to those conversion factors? One foot equals 12 inches. How did we find what one square foot equals? 12 times 12, or 12 square, right? Is 144 square inches. So down here, if one <laughs> centimeter is 10 millimeters, one square centimeter would be 10 times 10, or 10 squared, which is 100 square millimeters. So each position, when it's squared, each position on the chart is multiplying by 10, or multiplying by 100, or dividing by 100, depending on which direction you're moving. When you multiply or divide by 100, what does it do to your decimal point? It moves it two spots, exactly. So now every spot on this chart is not one decimal place, but two decimal places if the units are squared. So from centimeters to millimeters is one spot on the chart, but since it's squared, the decimal point has to go two spots, double that. That's 285. If this were 3,700 square centimeters, going into square meters, it's still two spots on the chart to the left, but since it's squared, we we double it. Yes, it's two, two decimal places for every spot on the chart. So we go four spots to the left. One, two, three, four. So that's point three seven. So if I have 7,900, 7,900 millimeters squared, I'm going to centimeters squared. From millimeters to centimeters is one spot to the left on the chart. The decimal point then has to move two spots to the left. Two spots for every spot on the chart because, again, it's squared. A one, two makes it 79 square centimeters. Or we might have 0 0.028 meters going to millimeter meters squared, I should say, going to millimeters squared. On the chart from meters to millimeters is three spots to the right. The decimal point has to go to three spots. Double that would be six spots. To the right. One, two, three. We got to add zeros. Four, five, six. That's 28,000 millimeters squared. Well, we're at it. What do you think this would do? Yeah, 10 cubed, 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. When you multiply anything by 1,000, it moves the decimal point three spots. So now every spot on the chart is multiplying or dividing by 1,000 or moving the decimal point three spots when it's cubed. So centimeters to millimeters is one spot to the right. The decimal point has to go three. Got to fill in the zeros. It's 2,700 millimeters. To get from meters cubed to centimeters cubed, from meters to centimeters is two spots to the right. We got to go two times three, right? Which would be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 8,300 centimeters cubed. <clears throat> we will talk a little bit more about these volume units, the cubic units, 
a conversion later, but I figured while we were at it, it was good to show you. So in your notes, I want you to convert for me. I'll leave the chart here for you to work off of. Two thousand seven hundred meters squared into or millimeters squared into meters squared. Point zero eight four centimeters cubed into millimeters cubed. And nine point six meters squared into centimeters squared. Do those in your notes quick. So, millimeters squared to meters squared. Millimeters to meters is three spots to the left, so the decimal point has to move six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, point zero, zero, two, seven. Since it was squared, you had to double the number spot. There's two spots for every spot in the chart. Point zero, eight, four. Centimeters cubed to millimeters cubed. Centimeters to millimeters is one spot to the right on the chart, but since it was cubed, we... Do a three for every one. So one, two, three, that's 84. I had to throw in one cubic one just to make sure you're paying attention. The 9.6 meters squared to centimeters squared. Meters to centimeters is two spots to the right. We're going to move four. We double it. So it's 96,000 centimeters squared. Any questions on those? Okay. <clears throat> we have already talked about the formula. We're just going to have to pretend that's a rectangle. The formula for finding the area of a rectangle. Now, if I have 27 inches by 10 inches, the formula is area equals length times width. And realistically, we always think of the length as being the longer of the two dimensions, but it doesn't have to be. The rule of 27 inches times 10 inches. Now remember, when we multiply, we multiply counts. 27 times 10 is 270, but we also multiply the names. Inches times inches is square inches. That's why we have that squared unit for area. What's really happening there, if you derive that whole idea of area just a little bit, Everything in geometry starts out from that basic concept there, a little dot. It's called a point. It is simply a location. It has zero dimensions. Zero dimensions means it can be measured in zero directions. Or you can thought of if you move on, on along it, you can move in zero directions. Now, you did say it has a diameter. And that's technically true because when we're writing on paper, it's not perfect. But ideally, a point is infinitesimally small. Yeah, it has no area at all. I have to give it area so that you can see it. But technically, it doesn't have a diameter or anything like that. Now, everything in geometry is derived from that point. If I take that point and I drag it in a single direction, I have now created, a lot of people say a line, but it's really called a line segment. Because technically a line goes on forever in both directions. But in practical applications, a line doesn't have real practical applications. It's a segment of that line, a piece of it that, it's useful to us. So a lot of times we'll ask, how long is that line? Well, a long, line is always infinitely long. But we're really referring to a line segment. This now has a length that is equal 
to the distance that we moved. It is moved in one direction. It can now be measured in one direction. It has one dimension. If I take that line segment, and I drag that whole line segment in another direction, the key is that second direction has to be what we call perpendicular. Now, perpendicular, you guys all probably know what a right angle is. Well, perpendicular means at a right angle in every measurable way. So two lines intersecting at a right angle is perpendicular, but it's it's just a right angle. Um, if there was a line coming out of the board at you here, it would be perpendicular if you measured the angle in every direction going around that line and it was always a right angle. So perpendicular is just a little bit more powerful than a right angle. It's every way possible to measure. To measure. So if we're moving in a direction perpendicular to the original direction that we moved, and we drag that line, it creates, think of dragging a stick across the sand on a beach or something like that, it creates a rectangle. The size of that rectangle depends on the length of the original line segment and this new distance moved. That new distance moved is often called a width. Hence the formula area is length times width. Now area does not have to be a length times width. If I take that rectangle, now I'm going to give you a little bit of a foreshadow of calculus. I should be careful. Foreshadowing implies we're going to do calculus. We're not. So this is a rectangle. And I'm going to say it's 8 inches high by, oh heck, let's go 13 inches long. Its area is 13 inches by 8 inches, or 104 square inches. What I did here was I divided it up into thin slices. Now I made those slices each an inch wide. I could have made them um, quarter inch wide or a hundredth of an inch wide or a thousandth of an inch wide. If I make them narrow enough, basically it's like a stack of papers. If I take that stack and I give it a little push, Is what I'm doing here changing the area of it at all? No, it's not. The total area of this side, yeah. What we're seeing, this total area of what's facing us hasn't changed. I've just slid parts of it over, right? If I had sliced this thin enough, like sheets of paper, you wouldn't be able to see those little steps on the side, would you? That's what we call a parallelogram. A parallelogram just has opposite sides that are parallel. But it, the rectangle is a parallelogram with right angles. But this parallelogram, now this length here is no longer 8. It's this that's still 8, isn't it? This is still 13 inches. The area of that is still 13 inches by 8 inches, or 104 inches squared, or square inches. But you'll notice it has to be measured this way, not this way. The reason is, those two dimensions are perpendicular. 
Calculating an area requires perpendicular dimensions. Make sense? In fact, it doesn't matter how I disarrange those little rectangles. I can push some off to the side like this. Some off to the side like this. And what I've basically created here something like that, right? What's this length up here? That's 13 inches. If I go opposite side to opposite side, I still have 8 inches. That area is still 13 inches by 8 inches, or 104 square inches because I'm still looking at that same end. Basically what I'm saying is, if I am taking a line segment that's 13 inches long, it doesn't matter how I drag it, as long as it stays parallel to its original orientation. I can slide it off this way and this way and however. Get back. And the area traced out, come on, there we go, might be like that, like I'll be able to redraw that again. Pretend those were the same on both sides. As long as this stayed parallel to the way it was here, I can slide it back and forth and all around as long as I keep moving away from it. And as long as this is 8 inches, the area of that is still going to be 104, 13 times 8. So we've always thought of areas being just rectangles, but it isn't necessarily. It's a length times a distance that it's been dragged through the sand, or however you want to think about it. Well then, what about other shapes? Let's say we have this shape here, and let's say this is 12 feet by 5 feet. What's its area? How am I going to find its area? 12 feet times 5 feet. That's 60 square feet. What if, however... Yeah, I could take that, it should sit in here, and be exactly half of that. So its area is 12 feet times 5 feet. That's the area of the related rectangle divided by 2. So that's only going to be 30 square feet. The only area that is truly defined in geometry is the area of a rectangle. Everything else that we do is going to be based off of a rectangle. So a triangle is based as half of a rectangle. Now this was a right triangle, so it's really easy to see that that right triangle sits in as half of that rectangle. If it's not a right triangle, and of course what we're multiplying is the two sides of the triangle that form the right angle. We always have to have two dimensions that are perpendicular. So what if it looks like this? We need to know this related rectangle. The dimension on that triangle that is going to describe that related rectangle would be if we have this 12 feet here that's a side of the triangle, we call that the base. That's just whatever side of the triangle we are using for the area. And then the vertex, the corner of that triangle that is not part of the base, 
the furthest away from the base. We connect that to the base on a perpendicular. If that is five feet, that would make this triangle a rectangle 12 by five. Is that triangle still half of the rectangle? Yes. If I look at it, I can do it in two pieces. Is the triangle half of that part of the rectangle? Yep. Is it half of this part of the rectangle? Yeah. So it's half of the whole rectangle. So that area, 12 feet times five feet, divided by two is 30 square feet. Now, many of you probably have done, instead of base times height divided by two, you've probably done one half base times height. Whatever formula, whatever way you do it is fine. I'm just doing it conceptually here so you can see where it all comes from. The tougher one to, to envision and to see is this one. So let's say this is 12 feet here. Yep. Yeah, but th this is this is still half of that part. This is still half of that part. So it's still half of the whole rectangle. And the whole rectangle is 12 by 5. Yep. Here, however, if this piece here is 5 feet, that 5 by 12 rectangle would be right here. It's a little more difficult to see that that, that triangle is half of that rectangle here. If I wanted to find the area of that figure there, there's two ways I could do it. I could cut it off here, find the two areas, and add them together, right? That would be fine. That's basically what I did up here, is I cut it here, and I looked at the two areas, and I realized this area and this area still add up to half the rectangle. Or, I could expand it out to make a big rectangle, and subtract out that missing piece, right? So I got 8 by 20, and then this is going to be 8 by 3. Subtract out that 8 by 3 piece. That's kind of what I'm going to do here. I'm going to look at, and this might be a little confusing. I'll warn you. When a math teacher says this might be a little confusing, brace yourself. There's a big rectangle there, right? If I look at this, is this half of the big rectangle? Yes, it is. But I want to subtract out this rectangle here. Well, if I look at what I'm subtracting out, is this piece that's missing from the triangle half of that rectangle that I'm subtracting out? Yes. So the triangle truly is half of this related rectangle. Again, that, that explanation may not be horribly clear um, without getting into some little bit more advanced stuff than I want to right now. There's not really a more precise way of explaining it. But the area of this triangle here is still 12 feet times. Now, 5 feet is the height of that related rectangle. It's not really a dimension on the triangle, but it's the height of that related rectangle. 12 feet times 5 feet divided by 2, or 30 square feet. <clears throat> and there are, of course, other shapes we can deal with. We can deal with trapezoids. A trapezoid is four-sided, just like a, a rectangle, only in a rectangle, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, and a trapezoid, only one pair of opposite sides are parallel. These two sides are parallel in this case. The two, what? We'll get there, just hold on. The two sides that are parallel are defined to be bases. So I'm going to call this base little b because it's the small one. I'm going to call this base big b because it's the larger one. 
there is a distance between them that's referred to as the height. So that height is kind of uh, just a misnomer because the height can sometimes go side to side if it's the two sides that are parallel rather than the top and bottom that are parallel. Now remember we said the only area that is defined is the area of a rectangle. So to turn this into a rectangle, we go halfway down the side, we're going to cut this off at a right angle, and we're going to flip that up and fill that in. We're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to cut that off, cut that little, just square it up, take that little rectangle, flip it up, and that'll fit right in there perfectly. We have now turned this into a rectangle. The height of our rectangle is still just the height of that trapezoid. It's the length of the rectangle that's changed. But that length is between little b and big B. In fact, it's exactly between little b and big B. It's the average of the two. Add them together, divide by two. So the area of this trapezoid is still a, tra a rectangle, length times width. Only the length is the average of the bases, and the width, of course, is the height. So, for this trapezoid, let's say this height here is 20 inches. Let's say this is 24 inches and this is 40 inches. Find its area. We've got to do 24 plus 40 divided by 2, then times 20. We've got to do our order of operations. We've got to do 24 plus 40 is 64. Then we've got to do 64 divided by 2 is 32. Then we don't need the parentheses anymore because we're down to a single number. Times 20 is 640. Those are in inches, so it'll be inches squared. In fact, I'm going to do this a little bit. Here, what are the two bases? 12 and the 68, yes, because they're parallel. So the area is going to be the 12 and the 68 that we average together times, now I said the height is kind of a misnomer because it's not always up and down. Our bases are the two sides. The order of operations, 12 plus 68 is 80. So 80 divided by 2 is 40 times 50 is 2,000, that's feet squared. Now, we're going to just briefly mention circles. We're going to talk about them a little bit more tomorrow because I'm running out of time. What is the area of a circle? What's the formula? Pi times radius squared. So if this is 5 feet, the area is pi times 5 feet squared. Comes out to about 78.5 square feet. Tomorrow we'll go over where the form of that formula came from and why it's valid. Also tomorrow we'll talk about PSI, pounds per square inch, when we start dealing with areas. We'll look at that more tomorrow. Um, for now, you guys in your little books, unit 30, deal with this when you, when you see anything on PSI or Pascal's or anything like that, just skip over it. We'll go over that quick tomorrow and you'll be able to finish it up. Okay, you guys have a good one.